Hello friends, it's really nice to talk to you, to talk to you again and um, this time I want to talk about Paul in trouble and um, hopefully you can draw out some lessons that might help us um, as we face various difficulties. So I'm looking at the last verses of the, the second Timothy. So we can, uh, if you have a Bible, brilliant. If you can open it up to 2 Timothy 4, 6 and read to the end of the chapter, that would be great. And as you do so, just think about what the problems that Paul was facing. I'll just read a few verses, but if you're able to read the whole, the whole rest of the chapter, that's great. Let's think about what were the problems Paul was facing at this time. He says, For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I've kept the faith. Now there's in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who've longed for his appearing. Now he says to Timothy, Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he's helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. So Paul is facing a whole range of problems from big ones. He's uh, facing execution by the Romans. He's uh, probably not actually in prison because uh, he's clearly able to relate to people to some degree, um, but maybe house arrest or something like that. He's, he's able to write letters, but he's, he's, you know, he's, he's awaiting the end of his life on earth. Um, He's also got other problems, some, some of them rather more, you know, more simple. He's, uh, he's bored. He doesn't seem to be lacking his books. He wants to have his books. That's why we've got a few here. Um, he's cold. He wants his coat. Um, either that or he's expecting it to get colder because he, later on in the letter, he asked Timothy to get there before winter with his coat. So, uh, you know, he, he may be anticipating that thing coming. So apart from that, he feels deserted by some, betrayed, abandoned. Um, so a whole mix of, of different emotions. He feels lonely. So, you know, it's good to realize that these people, some of these who, are, who may be sort of superheroes of the faith to us, uh, have those very practical problems as well. Who could I give a coat to or a book to or a sandwich or a meal or a phone call to? Uh, maybe someone that I admire, maybe somebody that I think, oh, they don't have problems. Maybe someone I think is an amazing Christian, but, you know, they still need that encouragement and that help. And Paul certainly did. Uh, he reminds me of another hero of the faith, of uh, William Tyndale, who gave us our English New Testament, um, who, when he was awaiting his execution, uh, there were plaintive letters asking for things like coats and books and uh, you know just longing for those sort of practical helps and uh, yeah let's uh, let's think of that that we can we can help people in that way it, you know it doesn't have to be anything very complicated then on top of that uh, let's think about you know where did he get his sources of strength and this this place of of lonesomeness of abandonment what were his sources of strength because he points to many in the letter and I would say, firstly, that he accepts the, where he is, the stage of life that he's at. He's not arguing about the fact that this is the end of his life. Um, he's, he's accepted that. He's accepted his, his stage. And um, it's a good question to ask, where am I at in life? And it, where am I at in my, my Christian life? You might be at, the, at an early sort of learning stage, I, I've come to faith or I've just, just started to really grasp what this faith is. Well, it says in the New Testament that the new believers gave themselves to the apostles' teaching. It's a time to learn. Is it a time to learn? Is it a time to soak up all you can? Maybe God's big story, the monthly course that the church is doing, many other ways. Are, are you soaking up all you can in, in, in the stage of life that you are at? Um, it might be that you've learned enough. And it's now the stage to get out and do something, to carry some real responsibility. Yes, I've volunteered and stuff. I've done a bit of this, a bit of that. But it may be time to say, no, I'll step up to the plate and take responsibility for something, leadership in something. And um, it may be that you've been doing that for quite a while. 
And actually the challenge now is to let go. Have you thought about who will do it after you? Have you made yourself too indispensable? Is it time to hand over? And uh, Paul is clearly aware of that in, in this letter, but he's got such an array of other people that have already caught the bug and one's run off to Galatia and one's run off to, to, to uh, Dalmatia and so on. Um, you know, do we have, uh, are, are we thinking about who to hand over to? Have we let go, have we passed things on? Um, stages in life, Paul understood his. Um, he also understood, uh, saw that God was at work in his life. And um, so even in very hard things, so a few verses later, he says, at my first defense, no one came to my support. Everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Um, so he's got a testimony. He's seen that God is at work in his life, even when the circumstances aren't right. And some of the things that he faced can make him very bitter, very upset, very, very unforgiving. But even there, he says, may it not be held against them. It's OK when you've seen that God's on your case. And Paul was, Paul was very aware that God had his life in his hands. And so should we. So should we. We should have that awareness. Paul, Paul ends by saying, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his eternal kingdom. And, um, you know, that wonderful confidence. We can have that too. We can rest in that. And it's evident from that then that Paul did not consider the evil among those evil attacks he'd been rescued from. And there are so many we read about in the Bible. He doesn't consider that his death is one of those evil attacks. And um, he's accepted that even though it's going to be execution. Um, he's accepted that, but he knows he's got a perspective, this final point of, of eternal security. He has an eternal perspective. He knows he's receiving a reward. He knows he's run the race. He knows he's finished the course. And he knows that God is going to get him safely there. For him, uh, failure would be it, it, you know, for failure isn't about isn't about you know suffering. Failure is about um, not bringing glory to God with his life. That's what he was afraid of at times that he would be lacking in courage and that he wouldn't bring glory to God with his life. There's a challenge for us. May we have that same attitude. Let us bring glory to God while we're here and rest in the security that God is at work in our lives. God's got his hand on the the little stuff and the big stuff and he'll bring us safely through to glory. Bless you all.